just cringe every time I watch that. Yep, that's me, Dean DeVitri, huge ass, truly Maine, or as they use my legal name, Dane Hughes. And this is my story on how I choked on ESPN. Back in November, we went to a national tournament called the Pro-Am, where one pro took two amateurs and they competed against 30, 40, 60 different teams, all for the glory of $1,300 and some medals. Little did I know I would be making it on ESPN. And fun fact, fun fact for you guys, ESPN did not really like me that much just for the simple fact that I didn't know I was gonna make it. I just went for shits and giggles. This is my first tournament ever. I just wanted to show up, fuck shit up, and have some fun. So under the alias, I put the name Huge Ass. And the day of the tournament, uh, this woman comes up to me and she's just like, hey, we know your real name isn't Huge Ass. We know your legal name. We're not putting Huge Ass on ESPN. We're not doing that. <laughs> and right from the get-go, I should have known that that was going to be kind of some trouble for me. But without further ado, let's uh, let's dive into these clips here. Let's dive into this video. Coleman Bates. Coleman Bates, good dude, my coworker, my homie, pro knife thrower, fellow pro knife thrower. He is fantastic. He was the team captain. He was the uh, the pro on this side of things. Hunky, gorgeous guy. Look at those. Look at those cheekbones. You just want to, you just want to pinch them. Look at that. Dane Hughes. And there I am, in all its glory. If I look tired, it's because I am. The tournament ran from 8 a.m. the previous day until four in the morning the next day. And we were the first people to throw on this broadcast. We're all tired, people are hungover. When you tell someone, hey, you're gonna be on ESPN, be here bright and early at nine in the morning, and it's already four in the morning, you, you don't got much time to, you don't have much time to worry about. You don't have much time to think about how you look and how you're gonna throw. And Joe Handy! And the homie, Joe Handy. What can I say about this guy? So fun fact, we just met him in person that day of the tournament. We were assigned another amateur to throw with us and we were drafted him. Lovely guy, fantastic thrower. And it was also his birthday. Like the day that this was filmed, it was his birthday. So he got he went to his first major tournament, he was on the broadcast, and he absolutely killed it. So Joe, if you're watching this, happy birthday, dude. So the Bandito Brawl was teams of three with five knives each. So the order didn't really necessarily matter. A lot of teams rotated, a lot of teams just stuck with what they did. So in our case, Coleman would throw his first th uh, first five, then Joe would throw his first five, and then I would throw my last five. And the teams would alternate between who was throwing. And the team we played against, lovely team, the Teets, they are fantastic. They actually beat us, Spo uh, spoiler alert, they beat us, but they're, they're fantastic people. And in hindsight, you want your best thrower to be throwing last, because once you throw a knife and it sticks, you can't take it out until the end of the game. So if they're if they're people throwing and they're sticking all their knives, there could be like 30 plus knives in that board. Like 30, at least 30 knives. I think my math checks out. Yeah, there's 30 knives in that board. And towards the end of, of how we got here, how we got to this tournament, we went six and oh, we were undefeated. Towards the end of the towards the end of the tournament, people would literally just take their knives and try to throw them up and knock out as many knives as they could. So we didn't want to win that way. I didn't feel we should win that way, but it was a viable strategy. A lot of people tried to do it and look where it got them. And scoring was really simple. It looked really complicated, but there was like an X in the center of the board. The center was red and then it was blue and then it was red. The very center was worth three points. The, uh, the blues are worth two and then the outside reds were worth one. So the team with the most points won it. Give it up for Chrissy Teets. Hughes doing it with the wrong hand. So that's my first throw. As you can see, I was super excited that I stuck it. I think I got maybe a two. There was already some knives in there. And of course, I'm gonna ham it up for the camera because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not a lot of people that throw get to throw on the broadcast, get to throw on the stage, get to have that experience. And 
I will say it was very intimidating to throw up there just because it is so quiet when you throw. You can, that expression where you can hear a pin drop, that is exactly the case because we had a meeting, everyone that was throwing had a meeting and they were like, hey, here's two things. It's gonna be unnervedly quiet in here and on top of that, it's gonna be super bright. Like you are gonna, don't look up at the lights because you will get retina burn. And that is very true. <laughs> and what really made it weird was just how quiet it was. When you're throwing, people respect, people respect you when you're throwing. They want you to be able to focus. They want you to be able to let you cook, as the kids say. So that first throw, I was super nervous. I just, I, I kind of blacked out. <laughs> But after I realized I stuck, that's when I was celebrating because I, I, I knew I stuck, I knew I got some points, and I was happy with it. Back and forth, really feeling the weight of the knife. Uh, seems to be very much a, um, yeah, a thrower who needs that, that feel. Dane Hughes able to... Second throw, a little embarrassing, uh, just because I, I think I knocked one of their knives into the scoring point. So all I could do is just be like, yeah, Okay, is what it is. And even before these games started, we had five practice throws each, and we had to reshoot this entire game because the lines, you guys can probably see the lines weren't where they're supposed to be. So in hatchet and especially knives, if your lines aren't proper, the proper 10 feet and the proper 15 feet, it throws off your game like entirely. So we had to reshoot this entire thing because it wasn't live, we were able to do that. But I kind of got gypped on that. I didn't get too much practice. So I literally just went up and threw. And unfortunately that throw, I didn't score any points. And that was very disappointing. Sometimes you gotta try to get- You can see the, the hand toss. I was hoping to get that center. I was hoping to get that three points because we needed it. And you'll notice that it dropped and it didn't take out a knife. So that, that throw was basically just a wash. I basically gave them a victory there just because I didn't knock out any of their knives. And you notice I'm kind of rushing just a little bit. So before we even threw, they were like, hey, congrats on making it, but don't take longer than 10 seconds to for your throw because we gotta, this is expensive. It's expensive to film this. We have to be able to wrap things up. We have to get our games going. So you have about 10 seconds to, to line up your shot and throw it. So at that point, I still don't know what I was thinking. I, when I got up there, I was just a blank slate. I didn't really know what I was doing and it, I didn't really process that I was throwing in front of all these people. And the pressure of walk up, throw, hope you hit, <laughs> kind of got to me a little bit. Two in the blue, one in the red. So those points really add up. And coming down to the final stretch here. And there it is. And there it is, that clip from the very beginning. Uh, I lined up my shot uh, before that. Coleman and Joe were just like, dude, you got this. Like, take your time, relax. That 10 seconds doesn't mean anything. And I lined it up. I thought I would get it. I under rotated and the knife dropped. And f <laughs> what the, what's funny is the commentators are in a separate room. So you can't hear what these guys are saying. Uh, I watched the video back and I'm just like, these guys are kind of wild. But they're both pro knife throwers. They both understand what's going on. And thankfully they were really, really supportive of every thrower. It's just when your team is kind of banking on you to make it and you drop, you're just kind of disappointed. You blew it! You had it all and you blew it! But I didn't give up quite yet. I think I have one more knife throw. I think I have one more throw to show you and hopefully I actually stick this one. So beautiful shot, ESPN does really great work with their shots and, and the board and the scoring. Beautiful shot, I stuck it, I was happy I stuck it, but again, I was a little high and I didn't knock anyone's knives out and I didn't score any points. So that was a tragic loss <laughs> on our part, but we still went six and zero oh just to get there and we did play second and the opposing team was just so fantastic. 
they were amazing. They were really, really kind, hard, sweet people. And I'm actually still really good friends with them to this day. And I also got invited to the World Knife Throwing Championship in April. So I might be the next world champion, but who knows? If you guys made it this far in the video, I appreciate you sincerely. If you wouldn't mind dropping a like, maybe a subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Maybe send us around to your friends to be like, look at this Fruit Loop throwing knives. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.